Hey, what's up, everybody? Y'all know what channel this is. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, a lot of things that, you know, I always get feedback about the channel and stuff. And then, they, you know, some of the feedback that I get is you and Alex agree on a lot of things. Well, some of the reason why we agree on a lot of things is because a lot of the things that I've shown Alex throughout the years is things that he implements. So me, I'm just so everybody know, I'm more crazier than Alex. He just sounds more crazier on YouTube than me. <laughs> um, but we disagree we disagree on a lot of things. Yeah, people don't believe it. But today we're going to talk about things that we disagree about. Uh, so with all that being said, I'm going I'm to give you all the first topic of things that we disagree about. And Alex, oh, yes, I'm here to offend Alex. So, But Alex probably got some things that he disagreed with me on. So let's just run with it. All right, so the number one thing, well, the first thing, it's not the number one thing. There's no categories to this. But one thing that me and Alex disagree on is... I believe time is greater than money. Alex believes, and this is just my view. Alex, you can always rebuttal this. Alex believes time is equal to money. That's just what this is what I believe. So what I mean by that is me, anything, I will do any and everything, include spend money to have my time. And Alex thinks that they're on the equal I believe Alex thinks they're on an equal level that he's not spending the money to get his time back. Alex is like, no, I'm keeping the money and I'll just use my time. But Alex, what you got on that? I can give you examples if you. That, that <laughs> one's fair. That, ooh, that one's fair because I would say, yeah, I think my actions would say so for now. Because I don't think I have enough. And this is just my thinking. I don't think I have enough money to actually purchase time in that sense where you can pay for things to save yourself time i don't think i have that luxury or i don't think i deserve that luxury yet because i need to focus on crunching every penny so i can get the next deal so i can build my income build my wealth so i think right now i'm at that unfortunate uh but i do think about that a lot you know i think of things that could save me time and how that could be of value but at the same time it could take me time to recover that money that it would cost me. So I do think of that as well. Yeah. And and I look at it as, and I look at it as, like you just said, you, you think you can't afford that luxury. So I'm just, I'm just giving people an example. So Alex has properties. Now he's, he's big time now, y'all <laughs> don't get it twisted. He's big time. Alex don't only invest locally. He invests out of the state. So Alex does his own property management, which is fine. I'm not talking about the property management side of it. But so if Alex has a problem at one of his units out of state, Alex will drive out of state to get it fixed. And then and so I'm looking at it only as, let's say it's a four hour drive, time to fix it, four hour drive. So let's just say it took four hours to fix whatever issue there. That's 16 hours. Me, if a tenant calls me from out of state, I'm just going to call somebody and say, go fix it. Will it cost money? Yeah, it will cost money. But that 16 hours I saved right there, that's 16 hours for me to generate the money to pay them and to come up with other ideals to make more money on a passive landscape. So that's that's how I look at it. And then that's why I say, Alex, he don't know. Uh, he be he be he be burning that time, y'all. Uh, so, Alex, what what what's one thing that you disagree with me on? And I keep saying that nausea, and you be like, "Oh, this month, this motherfucker crazy." Um, one thing I disagree with you on maybe it's a lack of experience because Kirby's got a lot of experience, a lot of bad experience, uh, especially from military and all that. But um, it could be my ignorance, and I think it would be that there are. I, I do think there are people, not a lot, not a lot. There's very, maybe a handful, but I do think there are a few people like that one lady you told me about, your uh, aunt, your great aunt, your, who was like, like there was a divorce going on and she was the ex-wife and she was, she was getting the money and she was like, no, that's not fair. She gave it to, I think there are people with good hearts like that. Um, 
but I don't think it's all people. But I think there's more than you think there are. <laughs> Kirby's like, that's the only one. That's it. Everyone else sucks. <laughs> but I think uh, I, I've met some, I met some people that have done right by me more than once and who uh, have helped me a lot. Um, but it is a, it is a handful. It is a handful. I don't. So that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's everybody, but I think there are a few out there. Alex is right. We do disagree on this. Uh, <laughs> for everybody that don't know, I believe everybody is savages. Everybody is <laughs> no is no cut and dry. Everybody is savages. Kids, parent, everybody is savages. I, that's that's my belief, and he's he's one hundred percent right. I believe it. But the thing is, is I go with that mindset of everybody savages. Like you said, you believe there is a lot of people that, I mean, you believe that it's very few people that have good, good heart. But I go with everybody is savages. Now I have that mindset. Now somebody proved me wrong. I'm not going with the rose colored glasses on like, oh, everybody's good and give people opportunity to screw me over. No, I'm already have you as, you know, you're a bad hired person. So now go ahead and do something to prove me wrong. And I'm okay with being proved wrong, but most of the time, <laughs> they all savages. <laughs> My kids included, savages. Oh shoot! Yeah, so you're right. Yeah, yeah. I just think that um, I I do go in with that mentality because it's you got to prepare yourself. Um, you don't want to be vulnerable and leave yourself open to get screwed over. Obviously. Um, but I think it's a matter of just building trust with people, but that's just business anyway. I mean, you build trust with, you know, build those relationships and stuff, but, um, I do think everyone does have it in them to, you know, you like, I mean, like the, the typical topic, like take food away from someone for three days, see what kind of person they, did, they turn into, you know, um, it's definitely in everybody. I just think that I don't think in every situation, everyone is out to like, prey on people that's that's just uh, not but I, I do think a lot of people are though <laughs> Alice is a savage also she's a that, go, that goes along with like but and, and the thing is I'm not saying I'm not saying every, well I I go with that mindset that everybody's bad but have there been people that's done right I mean I have tenants that's done right I have I mean I've know people that's done right but I always go with the mindset of Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. It to me is much easier. Uh when I had the mindset of, oh, everybody's good, giving them a chance. I got screwed over more than not. When I go with the mindset of everybody savages, prove me wrong. Oh no, you're not gonna screw me over. And then we just go, we just go about it like that. But it is some good people out there, but I'm not about to risk my life or my finances to find figure it out. Right. I'm going everybody's bad. Alex included. Alex is <laughs> Alex too. <laughs> Yeah, um me too. <laughs> another another one another one and and i'll give you a perfect example before i go to that one so <laughs> what i mean by alex what i mean when i say alex too when i first met alex i had the same mindset he's savage i don't give i don't give nobody any what's that now prove me wrong so alex we met then we met up then, then so two or three days later i can't remember we met up to you know have drinks usually 99% of the time, I'd be like, okay, well, yeah, you say you want to learn about this. Hey, I got this time. Let's make it happen. Usually, people will come up with an excuse. Oh, well, well I got to go do this. I got to go. I got to go take my mom shopping or something. They would come up with an excuse. Alex didn't come up with an excuse. He found time to make it happen. And then go on from there. That Just that one meeting, he didn't get excluded from being a savage. So, and then after that, I would call and text Alex at all times of the night. I mean, his wife probably in the background somewhere right now, like, yeah, I'm so glad he don't call no more. But I did it. I did it because that's when I was doing work, being honestly. But I did it on purpose. I could have waited till the next day and be like, oh, well, when this office hours, I could send him the message. But I got to know people who really want it. I don't want people that just want it on their free time. People that really want it 24 hours. So, yeah, everybody gets the same treatment. But people prove me wrong. Alex was one of hundreds of thousands of people that I've talked to about finance that really wanted it. So let me go to the next thing before we get on get on that. But you're you're right. You're right. We we disagree on that one too. Um 
Another one that I believe me and Alex disagree on is risk-free or leisure or no penalty money. <laughs> like even when <laughs> he laughing. All right, so so even when even when I was you know busted broke, and then we finally sat down, me and my family finally sat down and created a budget. Even though the leisure-free penalty-free money was super low. It was $50 a month. And that was $50 for me, $50 for my wife. And then all other money went towards debt and saving and investing. That, that was it. I mean, of course, we handled the bills, but rest went to saving and investing. Even then, when we busted and broke, we gave ourselves that, that stress-free time to just be like, you know, hey, I can spend money on this and I ain't got to worry about it. But we set it up through the budget. It wasn't just, oh, go ahead and spend whatever you want. Then we can put the money towards bills. Alex, on the other hand, Alex probably has never been in debt a day in his life. But, but Alex still to this day believe every single penny that comes in the house need to go. Like y'all seen the short when we was looking at the we was looking at the menu. Alex was the the video didn't start off as a joke. It was serious, one hundred percent serious. Alex was 100% looking at every price on there and he was trying to find something that was less than $5 so he can buy. So, Alex, go ahead. You can you can chime in on that one. <laughs> All right. No, I don't I I think we do disagree maybe. But look, okay. It's it, I got to explain myself. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. I think there is a time for risk free penalty. Like, okay, when I when when I look at you and how you spend money, I look at it different from me. I don't think I've deserved it yet. Like, I don't think I've gotten to that point where I could be like, Yeah, let me spend X amount of dollars per month. Let me set myself a spending budget. Cause I feel like I have way too much work I still gotta do. And so I try to limit myself. Like I said in another video, I feel like people that are broke don't deserve leisure. And in a sense, I feel like I'm still broke. I feel like I still got to I still got to make it. And so mm -hmm. I concentrate pretty much almost all of our income. I let my wife spend leisure money. Okay. <laughs> I let my my, my wife spend some risk-free money. I don't really do that, but like the way I look at it though is even if something is $50, like I know what $50 can do over time invested. And then I can use that money to invest in something bigger and keep it going. So like once I get to the point where I, where I'm pulling in more income, then I think it won't be so bad. Like, I think like one goal for us right now, for me, I would like to get like to one short term goal, I would say is like get to $20,000 a month in income. And then 30,000. And I mean, the more you pull in an income, then it feels like less and less that you're actually spending because you can re, uh, recoup that money much quicker. And that's one thing I've noticed. The more we've started to grow our income, it's like now it doesn't become just, OK, you only get paid on your paychecks. Then you get paid at the end of the month if you have rental properties Then you get paid for every insurance deal you close. Then you get paid for every time you sell options on the stock market, you know, it's like, so now there's like more and more income coming in. And so I think the more income you bring in, then yeah, there can be some to be expended or spent on leisure and things like that. I just don't think I've made it yet. See, so there is some things we disagree on. Alex, you got, you got one more. I we disagree on. All right, it's it's honestly hard because you have to think, and I'm just speaking to the audience right now. A lot of things maybe I don't agree on with Kirby. It's just because I have a different opinion. But at the same time, it's like what Kirby a lot of like a lot of Kirby's views are correct. And I'm not just saying that just trying to like kiss his ass. It's just they are correct. They have a lot of logic to it. Um but it'll be things like, let's just say, like, okay, let's just say for money, maybe. Let's say I can see where money can be used, obviously, like the, the goal, say, to build 
like this empire to hand off to whoever you decide to hand off to, but keep it growing for generations to come. Keep it growing. Have uh, this vision in mind to build something with a purpose, yada, yada, yada. I also see other people that, let's say some YouTubers or some people that have like other sources of passive income and they're just comfortable with having a couple million, a decent income from those streams and they just like kind of retire from everything and they go live their life. I think that could be acceptable too. It just depends on the person's goal. But I think that maybe you think more like, conquer everything <laughs> no no fun just take over the world <laughs> so i think maybe those two different ways of viewing uh i guess you, you, you think that you your your goal is to get a set amount a set amount so you can live you can live leisure life and well, I, I i i i get it i get it and the thing is and i understand and i'm talking to the audience because you already know this um Understand my view is different because most people, most people look at life as, hey, you work, you work, 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 and then you're going to turn 65 and then you're going to be able to travel and then whatever. Right. The difference between me and most people is I did all the traveling when I was active, when I still had the mobility. I I went out and traveled and did things like that, seeing different countries, been to more places than some people will ever dream in a lifetime. So my goal is only to keep conquering. I mean, because once, because me, I'm more of, I mean, you're more of hands-on when it comes to your investments, you're, you're hands-on, especially when it comes to the rental element of it, you're more hands-on. Me, I'm, I'm just an email and a phone call. That's all I am when it comes to investing. It's email, phone call, go do this, do this, do this. I have people that work for me to get things done, no matter on the business side, the real estate side. And then, of course, how easy it is to manage the option side on the cell phone. Because I've set up so many processes in the way, I just want to accumulate more. Like, like I tell people all the time, when I do the due diligence on a property, the day I close on the property, I forget about it. I mean, I close on the property, everything that needs to be done. I go send out the memos, emails to the people that need to do what they need to do to get it done. I pass it off to a property manager that I'm on to the next thing. So it's for me, it's always on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Now, my family, they can go do whatever the heck they want to. They can go party, leisure. And I mean, just like me, I mean, hell, my son, he's only nine. He's been probably been to more places than most people ever dream of. But it's not, we don't have that end goal of, hey, we're going to be 65 sitting on cruise ships. We cruised when we was, you know, in our 30s, our 20s. We went places already. We've been places. We've been the, the, the mecca of places already. So for us, it's just next, 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 next. And even if we did decide to go on a trip, I could still handle the business on the trip and I could still accumulate an ad. I've I've closed business deals flying into the airport in Dusseldorf, Germany. I've traded stocks on the airplane Wi-Fi. I've almost missed flights because I did it. So that's why for me it's just set it and forget it because I've just set processes in place. When especially when you're more of a hands-on person, it has to be a set amount because it's only a set amount that you can do being hands-on. You know, you can't have, I mean, you could, but most people can't sit there and have 100 rental properties and manage them all. It's going to take up all your time, all everything. So you got to be like, all right, if I have this much, this is what I can manage. And then I could, you know, do whatever. But you really can't do whatever because if, let's say you got 20 rental properties, that's all you, you need. You go on vacation and you're managing the properties and everything and you don't have the process in place. If a tenant email or call you be like, hey, the water heater just busted. Now you got to decide, oh, am I going to try to find, am I going to spend my whole vacation calling somebody or I'm just going to cancel the vacation and go handle the handle the, the, the situation of my tenant. So that's why, because we we invest different ways. People, I know people think that, oh, we invest the exact same way. We invest different ways. So that's why it it uh it's just different mindsets for us because we do it different. 
Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I can see those points. Yeah. I mean, eventually, I, I do believe I will get more to managing it how you are. But I think... I don't think so. Alice loves his money too much. He ain't giving up his time. He ain't giving up his money. He's in damn the time. Give me the money. Damn the time. Give me the money. But with this that being said, everybody, we don't want to run too long. Uh, so now you know it's something that we disagree on on the money thought uh, philosophy standpoint. People are still savages. Every last one of you that's out there. If I ever met you in person, I will always think you're a savage until you prove me wrong. But I'm always open to being proved wrong. But with that being said, please like, subscribe, and Give Alex all your hate mail in the comments. Have a go. See you guys.